So, welcome to the fourth lecture of digital system design with PLDs and FPGAs. Uh, before continuing, I will uh, run through the the previous lectures uh, slides uh, to be in uh, uh, sync. Um, so, let us move on. Uh, in the last lecture, we have seen uh, the synchronous sequential circuit, uh, its structure, uh, the design and we will see the, we will do the timing analysis today. But quickly, uh, we said that the synchronous counter is the simplest uh, synchronous sequential circuit um, we can learn. So, we try to build everything, you know, starting with the synchronous counter. So, suppose we have taken uh, we have taken an example of a mod 6 counter which counts uh, sequentially from 0 to 5 and back to 0 and so on. So, we said that you need uh, for binary encoding 3 flip flops because um, logarithm of 6 to the base 2 is 2 point something and so we take the integral number of flip flops as 3 and I also said that we will not show individual flip flops, we will show it together because we are trying to build complex systems. So, um, all the clocks are tied together when the reset comes this is 0 that is all we have. Now, in the next clock head you have to have the 1 and the next clock head you have to have the 2. So, the idea is to decode the next count from the present count. So, we put a combination circuit here before the, uh, the, the flip flops or registers and take the present count and try to decode the next count. So, that when the clock comes uh, the next count becomes the present count and we call it present state state of the uh, the counter and this is the next state which becomes the present state uh, upon the clock and this combination circuit has to be designed and that we know that uh, we have to design the truth table we have to write the truth table. So, to be able to design that and we write the truth table in terms of um, input as q2 q1 q0 d2 d1 d0 then form 3 equation for d2 d1 and d0. So, you get d i as f i of q 2, q 1, q 0, uh, i is uh, 0, 1 and 2. So, we say next state is a function of the, the present state and you should know that basically all the intelligence or the computation is in this combination circuit. The flip flop just holds it, uh, store it for it to work uh, at the precise edge you know when the clock comes this is let in ok. That is the, the, the function of the registers it serve as a memory to hold and the precise timing is achieved by the clock. So, everything is in synchronous with the clock. The state or the count change in synchronous with the clock that is why it is called synchronous counter and we said suppose you want to design a mode 6 counter uh, which does not count in this sequence. Uh, the sequence may be different it, it is not in order. Uh, but like uh, the sequence could be 0, 5, 3, 2, 1, 4, 0 and back. And uh, that case it is simple uh, you do not do anything you change the truth table to reflect this uh, sequence then you get that counter. So, that is uh, very simple and uh, we have looked at the output waveform. So, the count changes upon the clock but not immediately there is a clock to output delay of the flip flop. and we know that there are you know this is this shows the multiple bit 3 bits and there are 3 delays q for q2, q1, q0. So, we represent the worst case delay and you should also know that many a times this transition is not that it will transit smoothly from 1 to 2 because uh, 1 is represented as 0, 0, 1 and 2 is represented as 0, 1, 0. In between there could be transitory state in this case there could be a state 3 for a brief duration here. Um, I have not shown that, but normally when you simulate a circuit you will be able to see that. Um, for ease of drawing I have not shown and uh, it is very difficult uh, to say practically whether it will happen or not. Um, it might happen sometime we will see when it happens ok. And I also reminded you last time saying that when we abstract to the next higher level do not lose sight of the detail diagram. So, we are showing the 3 flip flops together everything together, but you should know that these are 3 flip flops are separate. The d 0 is a function of in this case only q 0, 
but in general case d0 can be a function of um, q2 q1 q0 um, again same d2 d2 and d1 could be a function of q2 q1 q0 so there are uh, different circuit like you have a d0 there is one inverter which is which is one level but when it comes to d1 you have an xor gate which is just one level but the gate is complex and when it comes to d2 there is an AND gate and an XOR gate. So, the, the delay from the present state to the next state is different for different um, uh, the flip flops uh, different paths. This should be kept in mind sometime when we see a picture like this that uh, that is not evident, but that you should not lose sight of the detail that inside you should be able to view uh, the D2, D1, D0 as separate paths. With, um, with different levels and different complexity and so on. So that is why I show this picture. So keep that in mind. So let us uh, move on let us see the, uh, the, the more complex counter. Suppose I want to design a mode 6 counter with up and down control that means uh, there is a control called up down when it is 1 uh, it will when it is 0 it will down count when it is up it will up count okay. That means we have to have an up down counter uh, control when it, when it is um, uh, say 0 it will be down counting that means if it is we start with the reset 0 uh, when the clock comes if the up down is 0 then the next state will be 5 then 4 3 2 1 if it is 1 then from 0 it starts 1 2 3 4. So, where how do we accommodate this that is a question, but we know that in, in a synchronous counter um, the present state is upon the clock the next state. So, all this has to whatever happens has to happen at the input D here that means uh, when the clock comes this is only moved here. So, this up down should come in the next state logic ok. So, essentially we give an input to the input it is a single bit it is shown as a bus, but it is just a single bit. Uh, so, when so when it is 0 it down count when it is up it is up count. So, essentially we change the truth table of the next state logic then you get up down counter. So, let us look at the truth table. So, now the truth table is becoming little more complex you have the present state which is q2 q1 q0 and the input up down. Now, the next state we decode as a function of the present state and the inputs ok. So, you have a column for D2, column for D1 typically in manual process you will pick all the ones uh, form the, the min terms minimize it and all that. So, but as I said we are going to use the higher level tools which will do the minimization. So, we do not bother about the, the, the whole uh, the, the, the minimization process we try to represent this table in some form of hardware description language. Maybe we will enumerate every case uh, in, the, in the most uh, simplest case or in some abstract form in a high level form we will represent this truth table very concisely when we go to the, uh, to the VHDL language. But the thing is that we get 3 equation now it is a function of not only the present state q2, q1, q0 it is also uh, a, a, a function of the input. So, we say in this case next state is a function of the present state and the input. So, if you go back to the diagram so the next state is a function of the present state which is fed back from the flip flop and the, the inputs ok. This shows that you can uh, give uh, you know you can give a very complex counter suppose uh, uh, one issue with this reset is that this reset is asynchronous ok. It means that as soon as you uh, make the reset active this goes to 0, but if you remove the reset and if the clock comes immediately then this will become 1. So, otherwise all the other counts uh, starting once you start the other counts is of the duration of one clock period ok. So, you can watch this the waveform. So, the waveform shows that this count remains there for one clock period, but the 0 may not remain in the case of asynchronous reset maybe we will uh, 
reset the counter here immediately the clock comes then the zero will be there only for a short duration. So um, the, there is an issue in this case uh, with the starting state the zero state then once you start it then everything is okay but the next zero which is which is kind of coming back will be okay but the starting zero is an issue. So if you want that to be perfect of at least uh, one clock duration then you have to have a synchronous reset. So it is very simple you give a reset here and change the truth table and say that when the reset is asserted this is 0. So cl uh, clearly upon next clock the 0 will come here and that will be remembered for the one clock period. So um, you could have any any kind of suppose you want to load some value into this counter and start counting from there. Say you want to load 3 very simple then you give a load control here and an input and then when the load is high you say the next state is that input. Uh, thereafter if the load is low it counts depending on up and down then you get a presetable counter okay. So uh, it is very simple uh, you can write the truth table with the load uh, the reset up down everything any any complex counter can be made and if you take uh, if you think of it uh, it is very easy even at in terms of the high level function uh, the, the reset can be thought of as a mux here. Uh, when the when the select line of the mux is the reset line when that is asserted we give a 0 and it goes there okay things like that. So or a mux here at the output and uh, we can view all these in terms of various multiplexers um, which we will see probably later uh, for the time being let us assume that the, the combination circuit functionality is changed by the truth table. So that is what I wanted to convey so you can have in principle various synchronous control like you can have a control called count by 2 if it is active the counter will count by 2 like instead of 0 1 2 3 it might go 0 2 4 6 0 like that. You can have a synchronous reset very properly it will reset and this is very important because many uh, counting applications um, is used for timing the precise timing and we cannot have any ambiguity that one state is only half. So in such cases uh, it is better to have synchronous reset. We can have a control called skip 3 if skip 3 is active then 3 will be skipped and as I said you can preset some values by asserting load then there is an input 3 bit input which is this shows the d in 2, d in 1, d in 0. So uh, that is the meaning of this. So when the load is high this value is loaded onto the counter. So all this can be incorporated um, that you should know. So you know all about how to build any counter, counter uh, which can count in any sequence, um, any complex uh, uh, operation you need not worry like you need not um, uh, learn what is inside and worry about it and moreover we are designing complex systems so that we can use hardware description language to represent all these. Uh, behavior in a little more abstract way than um, enumerating like in a truth table. Uh, we will see that when we learn uh, the, um, the, the VHDL. So the next question uh, I want to ask is that you we have talked about a synchronous uh, sequen, uh, you know synchronous sequential um, circuit synchronous counter can we have an asynchronous counter that means we do not have in this case what happens is that when the clock comes the next state come to the present state. That means uh, is we start with 0 next clock comes uh, the 1 comes here and that goes there and it decodes 2 and 2 is ready next clock comes 2 comes here. But the all the intelligence is in the combination circuit but if you see the purpose of the flip flop is to kind of hold the value here so that this logical work uh, properly and secondly it is precise timing when the clock comes the things change at the exact instant okay of course with the delay if the delay is kind of fixed then at the same time at the same interval this change happens over and over. But the question is that that is if that is a purpose why not suppose the propagation delay of uh, this uh, flip flop is 1 nanosecond say then what we will do is that between D2 and Q2 between D1 and Q1 
d0 and q0 we insert buffers of 1 nanosecond delay and make at the, at the, at the beginning make this present state 0 by asserting a signal then will it count 0 1 2 3 like that that is a question. We have no control over the timing it will go very fast as fast as the, uh, the uh, depending on the delay but will it work. So, the answer is that, that it will work there is no, no issue but you should remember there is an issue here which I have mentioned earlier the, the decoding circuit of D2, D1, D0 might incur different delays with respect to this point ok. We might put 1 nanosecond buffers exactly here but when from, from the present state to the next state there are 3 circuit 1 for D2, 1 for D1, 1 for D0 maybe one is slower than the other that can create problem. So, take this case we have a count 1 here 0 0 1 which is going to count 2 which is 0 1 0. Now, what happens is that there is a change in q 0, q 1 and q 2 does not change. Assume that the q 1 is faster than q 0. So, what happens is that before q 0 transit from 1 to 0 q 1 transit from 0 to 1. So, in between going from 0 to 1 to 2 there is an for a brief duration there is a state called 3 or the count called 3. Now, if that remains there for this propagation delay then the whole game can change uh, the, the next state becomes 3 and we lose control. So, the, the, the trouble with asynchronous circuit is that it is very fast um, when you want very high speed operation um, this is good. But wherever there is a feedback it creates problem because there is unbalanced path delay in the, in the multiple path and there could be races and we call this race uh, two output can race and there could be intermediate values things can go wrong. So, that is why we use as far as possible synchronous circuit particularly when there is a feedback uh, it is it is easy to design synchronous circuit than a synchronous circuit. Uh, but when the whenever there is no uh, kind of um, uh, feedback we can one can go for uh, asynchronous circuit. So, that is summarized here uh, yes asynchronous circuit is possible, but the trouble is with unbalanced path delay there could be races in output it is difficult to design and control it is very fast ok. So, uh, that is about the, the asynchronous uh, counter or asynchronous uh, sequential circuit. Uh, so, let us move on to the to the timing part of the synchronous counter we have designed. So, the, the question I want to ask you is that what is the maximum frequency of this counter that means, uh, we have a clock how much uh, frequency the maximum we can apply to this clock ok. That depend that has to be determined um, because uh, above which it may not work ok. So, definitely that depends on the delays of the blocks involved the delay of the flip flop and delay of the next state logic. And you uh, for a moment you think a clock edge active clock edge comes here then the present state will change after TCO delay then that comes here it propagates through the next state logic and comes here ok. So, there is a TCO delay and TCOM delay and there are 3 paths you know D2, D1, D0 not only 3 paths um, uh, I mean 3 outputs, but there could be 9 paths we will see that 9 paths, but uh, because uh, for each D2 the input can come from Q2 or Q1 or Q0 there are 9 paths and we have to take the maximum delay and now you know that before the next clock edge comes data has to be steady here some time before call setup time. So, we have seen that for the flip flop to work properly the data should appear here some time before the clock edge and it should remain some time after the clock edge. So, the clock period should accommodate all that delays and we will see it pictorially. So, let us take this as a clock and the a, a clock edge comes here. So, say it takes 
um, the this this much time the TCO time for the data to change here. So, it changes there you see the present state changes there and then it propagates through this combination logic and the data at this point the data changes here after a um, combinational delay. So, what that is what I have shown after the first clock edge the data changes at this point after the TCO delay and at this point after the, the TCOM delay. So, the, the data arrives here the uh, TCO plus TCOM delay after the clock edge, but we know that before the next clock edge comes the data has to be here some time before called setup time. Okay. So, now the, that means there has to be some gap at least this line and this line can touch, but it cannot go before. Okay. So, that means the total uh, the clock period T clock should accommodate TCO, TCOM and T setup. Okay. So, that is what is shown here the minimum clock period minimum you can go should be greater than TCO maximum clock clock to output time T comp maximum like what there are many paths we have to pick the maximum delay and uh, the maximum delay maximum setup time and that gives the, the minimum you can go. So, the maximum of frequency will be less than 1 by T clock mean because uh, this is becoming this is the maximum value. So, the frequency maximum we are taking it in the denominator. So, F max should be less than 1 by um, uh, T clock uh, mean, but it is not good to uh, like in this like it, it is not good to keep it equal then uh, any temperature variation if the propagation delay becomes more uh, then there is an issue. So, we normally give a margin and that margin is called slack which is the uh, all these three quantities subtracted from the T clock will give you a slack. Okay. But the surprising thing is that in this equation the whole time does not picture at all. Okay. It does not looks like it does not matter uh, uh, the whole time uh, uh, does not matter for the maximum frequency. Uh, maybe at the, the the beginning it is a little bit of a surprise, but then we have to we have to see uh, whether the whole time uh, is is kind of met in this case and what is the condition uh, that it can be violated. So let us look at this picture. The whole time say when a clock edge comes. Okay, here you say let us let us take this clock edge. Clock edge when the clock edge comes, it say that whatever data was there before the clock edge that should remain for some time afterwards. Okay. But we know that when a clock edge comes the, the data at this point is going to change only after TCO plus TCOM delay. Okay. So, the whole time if TCO plus TCOM you know that the next state will change only after this propagation the clock edge comes it propagates here then it propagates here then it changes there. So, it is enough if the whole time is less than TCO plus T comp or other way TCO plus T comp uh, should be greater than that whole time and mind you now we have to take the minimum TCO. In the maximum frequency case we pick the, the maximum uh, delay of the TCO and T comp to accommodate the T clock, but in this case the minimum is the is, is the constraint because uh, there could be a case where uh, one of the say Q0 is very fast TC Q0 is fast and from Q0 to one of the input is very fast then uh, there could be a problem. So, we say TCO min plus TCOM min should be greater than the T hole max. Okay. Now, um, that looks at least pictorially it looks uh, kind of an impossible condition to violate and now if you pick um, a, a flip flop okay, and just analyze the timing of the flip flop and if the flip flop itself uh, the TCO is greater than the T hold of the flip flop uh, this cannot be violated at all. The, the, the TCO uh, min or uh, the least TCO is always greater than the hold there is no question of this violation. Okay. So, it looks like whole time can be violated, but in whatever in this our analysis there is something hidden which we have not stated 
So, that is very important. So, here we have assumed that the clocks for there are 3 clocks going to 3 flip flops, but we assume that the clocks are arriving at each flip flop at the same time. So, but in real life that may not happen and that is called skew. The clock may be skewed with respect to each other. That means the clock 2 may be coming earlier than the clock 1 and clock 0 may be arriving later than the clock 1 and so on. Okay. So, this equations will change and there could be whole time violation when there is clock, clock skew and the worst case can happen when there is no combinational delay. Like assume that for some reason the combinational delay is small or nil and uh, you already know that we build a shift register. Uh, the uh, the one flip flop output output will go to the next flip flop input. So, in such case there is no combinational delay and if there is a clock skew there can be whole time violation. Okay. So, uh, this, um, this is important to uh, remember and we will analyze the case with the clock skew. But um, this is the main as far as the sequential circuit is concerned. Um, the next important thing is the maximum frequency of operation and the whole time violation. Um, these two things are uh, the, ne the, the, the important timing parameter of the uh, sequential circuit, synchronous sequential circuit and mind you that is built on the simple combinational delay and the flip flop timing parameters like uh, TCO, T setup and T hold. So, we have with very simple things the propagation delay of the combination circuit and the propagation delay of the flip flop, the setup and hold time, the next level of the timing details are built on this, the maximum frequency and the hold time violation. So, that is uh, at the next level that is the, the most important thing. So, quickly I have stated whatever I have told uh, these are the basic parameter and rest of all is built on that um, and uh, we assume that the clock is not skewed in this case when there is a clock skew uh, we have to analyze it and we will analyze it later and the whole time violation. Okay, One thing to remember suppose um, we build a circuit like that and we gave some clock we suppose we gave a uh, say 500 megahertz clock here uh, uh, which uh, which gives a um, say 20 nanosecond um, uh, 1 mega yes um, uh, 2 nanosecond uh, clock period and if this is violated then uh, what to solve the problem you have to kind of um, increase the clock period. If there is a uh, this inequality is violated to solve it is to increase the clock period, but assume that this is violated TCO min plus TCOM min is greater than the old time the increasing the frequency will not help at all because there is no T clock period in the in this inequality. So, there is no point in suppose this is violated the only way is to increase the, the combination delay. So, we may have to when there is a whole time violation we may have to introduce additional delay in the combinational path that is how to sort out the whole time violation that is what I stated here uh, when a minimum clock period condition is violated this can be met by increasing the clock period, but when there is a whole time violation you need to increase the combination delay. Uh, again I stated in a flip flop TCO can be greater than the whole time um, and if no clock, clock skew the whole time cannot be violated, but when there is a clock skew and when the combination delay is minimum or 0 like in a shift register uh, this um, whole time violation can happen then you have to uh, introduce. Um, the additional clock delay. So, let us look at the number of paths probable paths uh, in the previous circuit. So, suppose in the case of a mod 6 counter there are 3 flip flops and total number of probable register to register paths are 9 because for from each QI to each DJ there could be a path. Okay. In the case of a very simple sequence it may not be there, but in, a, in general there could be a path from like we know that the q0 is a function of uh, sorry d0 is a function of q2 q1 q0 so when you build the circuit for that um, d0 there is a path from q0 there is a path from q1 q2 so three paths for each d0 d1 and d2 there are nine paths so essentially 
as far as the timing is concerned it is to analyze this register to register path okay. Um, it need not be synchronous counter like in timing analysis we look at from each register to, to one source register to the one destination register path need to be analyzed for to find the maximum clock frequency and to find the whole time violation. So, that is a basic game. So, um, in general when you look at the, the sequential circuit there is some source register which is holding some value which is passing through a combination of circuit for some computation and it reaches the destination register and we have to make sure that this uh, like inequalities are uh, met. So, here uh, that there is a source register uh, uh, which uh, which supply the data uh, to a destination register through a combination circuit then the clock mean should be greater than TCO plus T com plus or equal to TCO plus T com plus T set up with some margin and uh, the whole time violation uh, to avoid then you have the TCO min plus T com min should be greater than the whole minimum. So, this is the most general case of the timing a register to register path wherein you can find the maximum clock frequency and the, the condition for whole time violation. So, we have abstracted it from the taking a synchronous counter and example and come to a very general uh, sequential circuit it need not be synchronous counter anything uh, can be analyzed in this manner. Um, so, let us move on. Um, so, let us uh, make things little more complicated or complex. Uh, let us take a flip flop. Um, we know that the setup time and hold time is specified at the input. That means, the, the we know the timing parameters state that with respect to this clock uh, there is a setup time. The data has to be set up sometime before, data has to be held sometime after. So, we take an example of setup time being 2 nanosecond and hold time being 1 nanosecond. Then the, the, the data width the, the minimum width of the data is like that data is changing from 0 to 1 just before the 2 nanosecond it remain for 2 nanosecond up to the clock and 1 more nanosecond and it changes ok. But many a times um, like we may take this um, input at a pin on a chip like you know on an FPGA and we would like to know and that might like the a wire is going from the pin through some buffers and reaches here. So, there could be additional delays in the in the data path as well as in the clock path, but for analysis we will separate this case it is easy to analyze and, and, and grasp the concept and then we can you know you can put it together. Uh, so, here uh, this uh, point in a delay of 2 nanosecond that means you give a data here it up appear here after 2 nanoseconds delay and when you supply a clock assume that the clock has no delay we would like to know what is the setup time uh, and hold time with respect to this point because we have control over this point. We are supplying the data from outside at this point and we are not worried about the setup and hold time here that does not help us because there is an additional 2 nanosecond delay. So, whatever we put here uh, appear here after 2 nanosecond. So, you see this data here comes earlier by 2 nanosecond d dash. So, I have moved the data um, at this point um, uh, by 2 nanosecond to the left. Now, assume the clock is same. So, what is the new setup time at this point d dash? Now, the setup time you see with respect to this clock setup time has increased because the data at this point has to be set up 4 nanosecond before because this 2 nanosecond plus this 2 nanosecond delay data d dash has to be set up 4 nanosecond before the actual clock. So, this 2 nanosecond is added to the setup time, setup time is increased. Now, whole time you see whole time is, is 1 nanosecond towards the left ok. Now, one thing to remember is that setup time is defined as the time before the clock edge the data has to be set up. So, and the whole time is defined as uh, the data has to be held after the clock edge. But in this case um, you know the, the, the data is, is removed 
before the clock edge. So, it becomes negative. So, whatever was 2 nanosecond uh, this delay um, uh, is uh, you know you have 1 minus 2 you get minus 1 nanosecond and do not worry about the minus 1 nanosecond it, it essentially means that you can remove the data. Normally you remove the data after the clock edge when the hole become negative in the opposite direction it means that the you can remove the data at this point even before the clock edge ok. So, if you do that at this point correctly the data will match this window of the setup and hold time. So, uh, it essentially means whenever you have a delay in the data path or the uh, this path then the setup time increases and the hold time decreases and the hold time can become negative you need not worry it means that the data can be removed even before the actual clock edge. So, that at the at the, at the input of the flip flop. Uh, everything happens uh, very correctly. Uh, so, that is the case with when there is a skew in the data path let us analyze the other case that when there is a skew in the clock path what happens ok. So, uh, this is uh, summarized whatever I have told a delay in the data path will increase the setup time decrease the whole time minus t means the data can be removed before the active a uh, clock edge setup time is defined before the setup before the clock edge and the whole time is defined after the clock edge. So, whenever it goes in the opposite direction it is a negative value. So, that is what it means. So, let us take the next case where there is a skew in the clock path and that means we have a pin here we give the clock and that suffers a delay of 3 nanosecond before it reaching the this particular flip flop and we would like to know what is the relation of the data setup time and hold time with respect to this clock, but that is where we have control. So, uh, the actual clock here is shown here this is the clock and it has a setup time with respect to this point uh, 2 nanosecond and hold time 1 nanosecond. So, in the normal case the data appear here with you know because there is a 2 nanosecond um, uh, here and the clock you see here the clock dash will appear earlier to this clock by 3 nanoseconds. So, that it will appear correctly here. So, now you can see that this edge of the clock is moved left by 3 nanosecond ok. So, now at this point our timing is with respect to the new clock or the clock dash. Now, you see the data has to be set up at this point after the active clock edge. So, the setup time uh, was 2 nanosecond, but now it has become 2 minus 3 nanosecond which is minus 1 nanosecond. That means, data is set up at this point after the clock edge with respect to this clock point. So, that is the that is a minus, but the it has to be held for 1 plus 3 nanosecond 4 nanosecond. So, the whole time uh, uh, is increased by 3 nanosecond by this q. So, it, it means that if there is a skew in the clock path the setup time is reduced by that much and the hold time is increased and in this case setup time can become negative. It means at that point with, the, with respect to this new clock the data is set up after the clock appears here. So, that at this point everything uh, you know works correctly. So, that is what is summarized here when there is a delay uh, uh, the setup time with the new reference point is decreased and hold time is increased and negative setup time would mean uh, that it can be set up after the, the reference clock ok. That is what um, about um, so this is what I have uh, you know covered in the last few slides. Uh, basically we have looked at the, the structure of the synchronous sequential circuit. We have taken an example of a synchronous counter. We have looked at uh, the main components like uh, uh, the flip flops the next state logic uh, you know which decodes the present state to make the next state. So, basically two components next state logic which decodes the present state and the inputs when you give inputs you give inputs to the uh, to the next state logic that it can control uh, the next state uh, in a desired way like uh, synchronous reset load uh, and up down and things like that any complex operation. Only thing is that we change the truth table accordingly then you get the functionality and we also said that you know there are 
um, you should not lose sight of the detailed view because there are a lot of paths within that symbol diagram which should not be lost sight and we have looked at the, the asynchronous uh, uh, circuit and uh, we have seen there could be races because there is unbalanced path delay in the case of feedback. So, it is difficult to design and control so we stick to the uh, synchronous sequential circuit synchronous counter in that case we have looked at the timing and we have looked at the condition for the maximum frequency of operation we have looked at the condition for uh, the whole time violation these are the two main things which is built on the basic timing parameters. Then we have looked at the case where there is a uh, what happens to the setup time and hold time when there is a skew in the setup path when there is a skew in the clock path what happens uh, with the setup and hold time with the new reference point that is very useful in analysis. Uh, if you do not grasp that uh, many a times you cannot analyze things properly. So, let us move forward let us look at uh, how to go about designing some uh, system digital circuit. So, let us move on say take an example suppose I want to design a 60 second symbol timer okay, which counts uh, like say 0 to 60 that is all uh, and display it uh, maybe for some, some practical purposes like uh, we have a counter which counts a little accurately uh, from 0 to 60 uh, in sequence 0 to 59 mod 60 counter uh, very precisely like uh, every 1 second it should change. So, how to go about designing that? Uh, is a very 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 simple thing let us start with a very simple design. So, how do we uh, design such a thing ok. So, let us look at the uh, to the slide. So, the first thing you need is a 1 second clock, but uh, you do not get a 1 second oscillator you have to build oscillators are high frequency oscillator you, ca you cannot have a crystal vibrating at a, at 1 second period. So, you have to have high frequency oscillators maybe 1 megahertz maybe 10 megahertz or 500 megahertz then you divide using counters to get a 1 second pulse. The, the, the moment you have a 1 second clock you can give it to a counter and start counting. So, let us uh, put that in the picture. So, we have a clock oscillator which is of high frequency maybe let us assume it is a 1 megahertz clock and then we put a divider. Uh, so, if you put a 1 megahertz clock you know that it has to be divided by uh, somewhere around um, you know nearing around 2 raised to 20, uh, 2 raised to 20 is a binary number more than 1 meg, but you need at least 20 flip flops with, with some mod to like mod 1 meg counter to divide this and here you get a 1 second pulse ok. So, we will make a very 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 simple design. So, for to count from 0 to 59 we will put a counter 2 part one least significant digit will count from 0 to 9 and when it reaches, reaches 9 it will increment a mode 6 counter which is counting from 0 to 1 like that. So, we will put a BCD counter which counts the least significant digit when it reaches 9 it will increment uh, a mod 6 counter which goes from 0 then when it reaches 9 it goes to 1 and so on. Now, we have to display it. So, we need a 7 segment some kind of display a simple thing let us take a 7 segment LED. So, we need a BCD to 7 segment decoder here we can use still use a BCD to 7 segment decoder or a mode 6 to 7 segment decoder then we can drive some uh, LED to, to light it up ok. It is very simple when you have given some simple design like this uh, you are able to design from one end you know you start with the clock you know, put the divider put a counter put some decoder things like that. When, uh, when you are thorough with the digital design simple uh, design like this can happen um, in a very very from one end to other and you take a paper and uh, do it. And if you try to design this in a uh, using a hardware description language it is very few statement maybe one state few statement for this divider few statement for this and something for this and you you can connect it the output to the LEDs then it works perfectly fine you can add different control like reset and what not. So, 
all that we have learned you know you can incorporate many other controls in the counter if you need okay. But um, I talked about uh, at, the, at the beginning of the, the lecture there is function, there is timing, there is electrical spec. So let us investigate whether that does that matter here. Uh, what is uh, uh, the function okay function we have designed okay. So is there any uh, timing related issues here okay uh, or even function like area uh, such issues can, can be addressed. Uh, in a simple case like this okay. So uh, like if you look at this counters it count very low frequency like it counts a kind of uh, 1 second. So it is not a very high frequency design but you take this divider you see the clock of the divider is 1 megahertz. So at least 1 megahertz. So this um, divider is working at a high frequency than this counter. The flip flops here are clocked at 1 megahertz at least some flip flops are clocked at 1 megahertz depending on the design. So it dissipates lot of power here okay. So that is an issue to keep in mind you know there is there is a high little high frequency part compared with this. Secondly uh, I said this need to be accurate. How do we make sure that this 1 second counter is accurate and how to, to, to improve the accuracy. So that you should know that suppose this clock source has some drift say it goes so it is a 1 megahertz uh, you know uh, clock, uh, clock source suppose it drifts little bit you know say some parts per million it, it drifts then you know that the drift is divided by this divider. So since it is drifting in the higher frequency the drift in the lower frequency is so much divider so the accuracy improves. So it shows that if you instead of um, a, a 1 megahertz clock if you go to a 10 megahertz clock with the same drift you will get a better accuracy in terms of the accuracy of 1 second. So it, it probably is worthwhile to, to go for a higher clock frequency then you should know that the divider size will increase like if you go to 100 megahertz uh, the number of flip flops will increase and the, the frequency of operation will increase and the, the, the power dissipation will increase and suppose if it is a battery operated thing uh, the higher accuracy might mean. Um, lower battery life I and mean that you should know okay. And similarly look at the area of this say the BCD counter you know that it counts from 0 to 9 it needs 4 flip flops and mode 6 counter need uh, 3 flip flops and that means it is 7 flip flops. So uh, can we reduce this number of flip flops okay. So think for a while uh, this design takes 7 flip flops can we reduce for the number of flip flops for the same functionality. So uh, the answer is yes because here we have split the counter like a, a mode uh, 9 counter or a BCD counter and a mode 6 counter there are 4 bit output here 3 bit output here. So for a while let us assume what we need is a, a counter which count from 0 to 59. So assume that we are not splitting it we are putting it together okay. That it counts it is a, it's a we can put a 6 flip flops uh, which can count up to say uh, 64 and uh, but we will design set that it count up to 59. Then uh, we instead of having a BCD and mode 6 counter we design a counter which is mode 60 counter that means we put 6 flip flops and redesign then we say 1 flip flop. But the complexity is that. Now here we had a BCD to 7 segment dec uh, decoder decoding 4 to 7 uh, like 4 to 7 decoder here it is 3 to 7 decoder. But in that case we need a mode 60 to 2 7 segment LED decoder okay. That means we will have some 6 lines here which is using a combination circuit you have to decode as 2 7 lines. Maybe we will we do not know the complexity of that decoder it depends on the input output pattern we cannot say anything about the redundancy. So if you go for a mode 60 counter we may say one flip flop here but maybe the decoder here can become more complex than this separate decoder I do not know unless you literally try and find out uh, you should not assume that that will be simpler than this case need not be. So uh, one has to verify that uh, whether that will be a simpler thing 
and definitely you know that here it is driving the LED suppose the LED uh, to, to, uh, to be very bright will take some current. So maybe this uh, BCD to 7 segment output pins has to give some uh, 20 to 100 milliampere for it to be visible at a distance. So there is an electrical spec which needs higher current drive here. So even in a simple circuit like this there are issues of uh, the high frequency, power dissipation, the area, conflicting requirements of area we do not know. We cannot a priori say that uh, a, this is a better scheme than mod 60 counter or anything like that. So uh, the my advice is that seeing something simple uh, you should not assume that it is very simple. There are no issues, there may be issues like uh, the accuracy as we see area, uh, then the timing, uh, then electrical specifications and things like that. So this we should keep in mind whatever be the, the design is small or big uh, there could be these issues to be uh, thought about and the textbook may not teach you all this. It is for you to apply uh, whatever you have learned in the basic and apply to the, uh, to the particular case and uh, that comes with the experience, comes with many a times uh, working on uh, simple projects, implementing things then only you will be sensitized, then only you will be quickly able to catch on this issue and solve the issue. That comes with the experience, comes with thinking. The in learning uh, it is not uh, that you learn everything, um, you understand everything but thinking uh, is an important thing and what you have learned in the textbook you have, uh, you have to apply to the real life. Uh, then only uh, you can find the issues in real life and that is the true engineer is the one who finds the issues and quickly identify the problem areas and try to solve it. And uh, there is no one can say the systematic approach will help but many a times that alone will not help in a complex system some issue come up many a times you have to quickly um, uh, to use a very oft repeated uh, phrase uh, you have to zoom in to the, to the issue and sort it out and that comes uh, sometime very quickly without like you cannot go from uh, remembering all the issues and one by one looking at it many a times it clicks in the mind that comes with the, the experience that comes with uh, your own deep understanding of the issues and uh, the mind works very quickly seeing the, the behavior you will be able to quickly debug you know that is one issue I want to emphasize um, uh, with the real life circuit the debugging is very important that when you have a problem you should be able to quickly sort it out and debugging is not limited to the hardware it can be the software it can be a mechanical system. Uh, it can be true with the mathematics uh, you know you do not call uh, debugging a theorem or a debugging a proof but essentially that is what is done uh, you are like you are trying to suppose you are you have a hypothesis you are trying to prove it and you try work out something something goes wrong. So that what things go wrong should point you out what is the what is wrong with the hypothesis or what is wrong with your approach to proving it and things like that. So I would say uh, that is um, debugging you know that is a debugging the mathematics. So you can debug a mechanical system something is going wrong something is not moving properly you have to debug it. Uh, the, the concept the ideas uh, the technique the thinking is same uh, irrespective of whether it is abstract whether it is uh, real life sometime you will be surprised to see a very lowly technician applying their mind you can learn a lot um, when, uh, when, when you see uh, the real technician solve some problem in their domain um, they the experienced people go in the correct sequence of assembling something, dismantling something, uh, trying to locate the, uh, the issue with the, with the problem and sort it out. This is an eye opener maybe they are experienced they are doing the things uh, day in day out but the uh, the engineering domain needs such approach, such thinking, such deep understanding experience um, uh, and learning uh, with the practical example always try to, to implement and try to if something goes wrong uh, try to find out what is going wrong. So that you go 
um, wrong less time. It many many a times people repeat that you have to learn from mistake. Um, yes, you have to learn from mistake, but in your um, career in your life you should make less mistake. Like you should learn as much as from the mistake. That means once you make a, something goes wrong, uh, then you should analyze it and learn it thoroughly so that that is not repeated. So the the next slide I will give a I will just sensitize we are going to a, a bigger design okay. Uh, really we will take a complex design and see um, how to uh, you know how in a complex case the design can be done. So I did not start the uh, lecture just now because I will have to terminate it halfway. So the next step we have taken a very simple case and see how the digital design is done. The next step is that we will take a reasonably complex design and uh, see how the design methodology uh, uh, can be applied in terms of uh, uh, the function, timing, the issues involved, how to go about knowing with the, with the minimum knowledge how you can design is, the, is what I am going to cover in the next lecture. So I have covered some minimal things but these are very important things I have covered. So please go back review try to grasp uh, in your mind you know think about it uh, work on a paper uh, try to 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 understand ask questions yourself uh, like you should have the doubt write it down now this is a video lecture i have no way to uh, interact with you but then you write down your question logically then try to answer it look for the answer probably you can contact me if you are stuck uh, very much you can contact me in email I uh, will try to answer. So I wish you all the best and in the next lecture we will move with a, with a complex case and uh, thank you.